Based on the examples of worksheet exercise number three of the inductors of the capacitors and inductors worksheet, we see that an inductor can be defined as a device that stores kinetic energy, unlike a capacitor which stores potential energy. Also, as with capacitors, there are many different types of devices that can be modeled effectively as an inductor. While we're going to be primarily concerned about the electrical inductors or electrical chokes, there are mechanical systems, which is the uh, moving of a mass or a flywheel or inertial systems. Um, hydraulic systems also uh, can be modeled with a, uh, have an inductance model to them, and this acts as either a paddle wheel or a flywheel. It's kind of linked to the mechanical system as well. And there's no thermal equivalent for an inductive element. All right, so to determine um, how an inductor behaves, we need to think about um, something that you learned in physics. So from physics, we know that when a current is passed through a wire, the motion of the charges through the wire results in a magnetic field. And the larger the current, the stronger the magnetic field that is produced. And we can use the right-hand rule uh, to determine the direction that that magnetic field rotates around the wire that the electric current is passing through. Now, <clears throat> the inductor model is simply a coil of wire. So this coil of wire might be wrapped around air or some other magnetic material. And as current passes through this coil of wire, a magnetic field is established. So if we perform the right-hand rule around this coil of wire here, we see that we would get all of these little loops um, as we pass current through this inductor around this wire. All right, and through the principle of superposition, what we can do is we can add up all of those magnetic fields, and we see that we get an established a magnetic field that's much larger than those little loops around that wire. So this coil of wire is going to result, uh, when we pass a current through this coil of wire, is going to result in the formation of a stronger magnetic field, which has a polarity to it. It has a north pole and a south pole. Now, if we go back to our physics, we also knew th um, we also learned from physics that um, when we pass a wire, a loop of wire or a coil of wire, through a changing magnetic field, that we um, will also generate a, a current. So as we um, initially start to uh, pass current through this wire, we're going to be getting a large change in the magnetic field. Now as this magnetic field is starting to build up, we have a coil of wire that's in a changing magnetic field. So as we pass current from left to right in this system, the fact that we're generating a magnetic field means that we have a coil of wire in a, magnet, in a changing magnetic field. And the fact that there's a coil of wire in the changing magnetic field is going to cause a opposite uh, current flow, or a current flow in the opposite direction, because we're passing a wire a coil of wire through a changing magnetic field. So again, we start passing current from left to right, we generate this magnetic field, the magnetic field strength is changing, and because that magnetic field strength is changing, we get a um, induced uh, or backwards EMF or backwards uh, uh, current flow um, that opposes uh, this current flow that we're passing through the, uh, through the wire. All right, so um, it takes time to build up and fully establish this magnetic field. All right, so inductance is a measure of how strongly a conductor configuration opposes the change in current. All right, and it's just a measure of the strength of the magnetic field that's produced per unit amp of current that's passed through the wire. Um, and it um, is measured in these units called Henry's. Now, Henry's are, again, we're measuring the strength of the magnetic field, which is Weber's per unit current or per amp. Um, we also know that a Weber is the same thing as a volt times a second, so we can um, use this to reduce um, the equivalence of a Henry into um, an ohm times a second. So all of these units are equivalent to each other, and uh, we will be using these um, in, in the future. All right, so just like the capacitor, we can come up with the um, equivalent inductance of a coil of wire if we know the geometry. Again, we're not going to spend a lot of time with this uh, because uh, solenoids or, um, 
or inductors come in all sorts of forms. Um, but just so you're familiar with the fact that um, if we know the geometry of this, if we know the cross-sectional area of the cylindrical core, we know the number of turns of wire that are used, and we know the magnetic permeability of um, the conducting, or excuse me, the, uh, the uh, cylindrical core, uh, we can determine from the geometry the uh, solenoid um, inductance. Now this applies only for this particular cylindrical geometry. If we have a different geometry we'll have a different formulation um, and if you're really interested in that uh, there are numerous tables for inductor design. Again we're primarily interested in the use of inductors in this course and uh, not uh, the design of them. Alright so inductors come in a lot of different uh, shapes and sizes and forms. Um, for our circuit schematics, they're going to be represented using either this symbol right here or this symbol right here. And these symbols represent different things um, in terms of the physical uh, representation, how the uh, inductor is actually built. But in terms of our analysis, just like the capacitors, it doesn't matter whether it's an air core, which means that there's a coil of wire wrapped around air, or if it's an iron core inductor, which is a coil of wire wrapped around iron, and again wrapping this coil of wire around an iron, which is a uh, ferromagnetic material, uh, gives us uh, an enhancement in the, um, in the uh, magnetic field that's produced and therefore a much greater inductance. Um, but again, uh, these symbols are only to distinguish the physical uh, implementation of the inductor and not um, to represent how uh, they behave. The, in terms of analysis, um, they will be identical to each other. Okay. Again, as with the uh, resistors and capacitors, we can come up with inductor current to voltage relationships. And based on the examples in uh, exercise four from the worksheet, we can see that the voltage across the inductor is modeled um, by a differential relationship where the voltage is proportional to the inductance multiplied by the rate of change of current through the inductor. And similarly uh, to the capacitor we can rearrange this equation into a separable differential equation and integrate to determine how the current varies with the potential um, across the inductor. And from this, we see a couple of things that are analogous to the capacitor. Um, we see that for a inductor, the voltage across the inductor can change instantaneously. But because the current has a integral relationship with the voltage, the uh, current through an inductor cannot change instantaneously. That means that uh, there needs to be time. Uh, time has to be had uh, for the current to um, fully develop through an inductor. And this is because it takes time for the magnetic field to uh, become fully established through the inductive element. So it takes time for the current, the full amount of current to pass through that um, an inductor to fully develop. All right, so again, like capacitors, in inductors introduce this uh, time dependence into systems. And an inductor permits an instantaneous change in voltage across its terminals, but does not allow an instantaneous change in the current flowing through it. Okay, so an ideal inductor in steady state, when we have a constant, um, when we have constant current, um, there's no voltage drop across the inductor. If we go back to our relationships here, if our, um, if our current is constant, then we have a zero volt potential across the inductive element. All right, and that means that in steady state, the ideal inductor acts like a short circuit or acts purely like a wire. In this condition, we say that the magnetic field is fully established and the kinetic energy of all of the moving charges is fully stored within the magnetic field of the inductor. Now, we can use or come up with a analogy, a fluids analogy for this. All right. The inductor acts like a paddle wheel or an inertial mass with uh, paddles on it um, that, uh, that is placed in the flow path. So if you imagine that we have a pipe here and um, we have a paddle wheel in the middle of that pipe, when we create a pressure difference on one side, on the left-hand side of the pipe, relative to the uh, right-hand side, if, this, if 
pressure on the left hand side is greater and this paddle wheel is initially stationary it's going to take some time we have to transfer the energy or the um, or the force uh, that's developed on the left hand side to the paddle wheel to start overcoming the inertia of the paddle wheel and start that to spinning now once the paddle wheel starts spinning it becomes easier and easier to spin it and we get more and more current passing through it or more and more uh, fluid passing through it until it spin until it begins to spin at a constant rate at which point in time we're getting the maximum amount of water to flow or liquid to flow um, past that paddle wheel now if we all of a sudden um, change it so that the there's no pressure difference this paddle wheel is going to continue to spin because of its inertia so in that case we're going to continue to um, pump if you will uh, fluid um, from the left hand side to the right hand side because it's going to take time for this paddle wheels inertia to um, to to slow down and um, stop spinning and stop pumping fluid from the left hand side to the right hand side Okay, it's all because energy has to be transferred to rotate this fl um, flywheel before it's allowed to uh, flow freely or to stop. And that's um, the inertia of this paddle wheel is analogous to the establishment of the um, magnetic field in an inductor. All right, just like um, the capacitors, we can come up with power relationships. Uh, we're not going to be dealing with power relationships a lot right now, but in the future we will. But an inductor does not dissipate any power, it only stores power to be used at a later point in time. Right? And um, it's, it absorbs power is, is primarily what we say. Um, and using the current and voltage relationships for the inductor, we can come up with uh, some, some different relationships for the power that is absorbed by an inductor. Also, we can combine inductors in series and in parallel, and we find that using Kirchhoff's voltage law, we can come up with the equivalent inductance of inductors in series, and inductors in series add like resistors in series. And similarly, inductors in parallel combine together like inductors um, in, uh, excuse me, inductors in parallel combine together like resistors in parallel using the reciprocal addition equation. All right, a couple of uh, caveats here. These are ideal inductors. So an, an ideal inductor has no resistance to it, but a real inductor is a series or a coil of wire. Now a real inductor will have some resistance to it because that wire will have some resistance. So a coil resistance is often not negligible. To model a real inductor, we are going to uh, model a real inductor as being an ideal inductor in series with a resistive element. And that resistive element represents the resistance of the wires that comprise the inductor coil. Um, in this case, not all of the power is going to be absorbed by the inductive element. Some power will be dissipated by the resistive element, and that results in heating of the coil of wire. Um, that forms the inductor. So some of this power will be um, it will be dissipated by the resistor, and we can determine that power that's dissipated um, through Ohm's law because this acts just like a a resistive element. All right, and from that we can look at some different examples of how to um, combine inductors and capacitors in series and parallel, and uh, some um, things that you should be familiar with for those combinations.